What's going on guys? Alex Hurst 814 EDC. And did you guys see my new intro? Before we jump into today's knife content, I just want to touch on this real quick. Uh, my buddy Brent over at Backpack B made the uh, the new intro and my like page, um, like banner uh, picture for me. And I am just, I love it. Brent, thank you so much, dude, um, for, for doing it. Uh, if you guys don't know who Brent is, again, Backpack B, uh, I will leave his Instagram linked and his YouTube link down below. Please go check him out. Brent is a, a phenomenal dude. Um, I've gotten to know him a little bit more within the last you know month and a half or so, and he's just he's so like easy to talk to. He's so down to earth. He is just a, a gem in the knife community. Um, and probably I don't know back in December or so, I reached out and asked him if he would be willing to uh, make me a new intro and stuff like that because I just had one and a new one. I, th I felt like it was time to make a new one or have a new one made and stuff like that. And he was like, yeah, dude, of course, and stuff like that. But he had a, a few to do before me. Um, so he's done others before. Uh, if you guys watch Kev, Left EDC, which I'm sure you do, um, he made Kevin's, um, he made the Knife Modders, he made uh, Lewis Addicted to Knives, he made him like a logo, um, and he made someone else that I am not thinking of right now. Uh, but he's, he's been doing a lot of um, design work for you know channels and stuff like that and he does a phenomenal job Brent is an absolute wizard um, it's what he does for a living he's a graphic designer graphic analyst I forget what his technical title is um, but he does it for a living and he does a very good job at it so uh, to me it's like a whole other language but to him it's like you know writing English um, so I just wanted to thank you Brent uh, if you happen to be watching this you did a phenomenal job and I'm so happy so uh, yeah, please go check him out again. I will leave his Instagram and his YouTube link down below. Um, he has recently come out with a collection diver series. Uh, one more point before I jump into today's video. He, I think he's done four so far, three or four, where he um, goes and he, you know, dives into a person's collection. You know, they, they go through all the knives and he like goes to the people's houses and stuff like that. It's one of my, it's probably one of my most favorite um like new things to watch on YouTube. I I love whenever he announces he's gonna be putting one out soon. And like I've asked him a few times, like, hey man, when are you putting it out and stuff like that? Because it's just so fresh. It's just so it's so fun to see content like that because it's like part vlog, part like not. Nah, it, it's it's like a combination of both, and I love it. So um, Brent, keep doing that because I think you have a really really good thing on your hands. And uh, again, thank you so much for um, taking the time out of your busy schedule to make me a new intro and a banner picture because I love them so. Jumping into today's knife content, I'm ready to do my full review on the Beztech Operator. Now this is one of the four knives I got in from the Black Widow Pass On Group um, that is in the Beztech box. Before I go any farther, I've got to crack open today's drink of choice, uh, Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar Cream Soda. Absolutely love it. I'm so glad they started doing Dr. Pepper and Zero Sugar um, because Dr. Pepper is like my kryptonite. It is delicious. Um, and I'm so used to zero sugar now, it, it tastes good to me, but you cannot beat just a nice cold Dr. Pepper on a hot day. So refreshing. You got 23 flavors in there. So yes, this is the Beztech Operator. And like I said, this came in with the four other Beztechs from the Blackwood or Passaround group. So shout out to them and shout out to Justin, the knife dude, for always running such a good group and for always getting these knives in force. Jumping right into materials today, um, this is an OD Green version, and I have a paper in front of me because I have a lot of reviews to do. Um, I went on White Mountain Knives and I looked at all the models they had. They have a green, a black, and an orange version. Um, some with this partial like satin with dark black stone wash, and others with I believe a full um, like DLC blade. Um, but I believe all of them on White Mountain Knives are sold out. Um, but I will leave a link to this knife on White Mountain Knives below um, just because uh, if you guys are wanting to check it out, you can get good specs and stuff like that there, and then you can go elsewhere if you want to buy it. But um, as you guys can see, I have the OD Green one, rocking some uh, G10 scales, obviously. has some nice contouring and, like, milling kind of running, like, both up and down on the scales. Looks really, really nice. Has a cool texture to it. There you have the Beztech Pivot, the logo. You have a loop over style deep carry clip that is recessed into the scales. And then you have the mushroom top type screws, which is nice. 
Um, the clip is, is pretty well done. I wish it was a little bit shorter. You guys know that I tend to um, prefer shorter deep carry clips over longer ones. But I guess with a knife that's relatively chunky and relatively big like this one, um, you know, a long clip is, is okay. You have a, excuse me, uh, Dr. Pepper's talking back to me already. You have a G10 backspacer here that is nice and flush with the scale. You have a lanyard tube. Obviously, you have a flipper here. You have this ginormous hole, which we'll touch on later. Um, there is a couple milling spots on actually both the um, show side and the lock side. This is a liner lock. Again, you have a partial like dark stone wash with um, satin here. It is in D2. And it's kind of like this like worn cliff, like very wicked worn cliff, I guess you could say. It kind of has a poon spoon here as well. Um, definitely a unique looking knife. Um, you know, we'll get into that later, but um, I think that's all for materials. I don't think I'm missing anything. The grind is flat, obviously. And it's not like ridiculously thick behind the edge, but it's not thin at all. It's kind of right in that medium range. Um, I'm never that good at determining, you know, a really, uh, most of the time it's, it's pretty easy to determine a very, very thin edge uh, versus a very thick edge. But sometimes like in that, you know, middle to like upper end of, you know, middle, I guess if that makes sense, um, of thickness, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, I've definitely felt a lot, a lot of more uh, s slimmer and skinnier um, grinds, but I've also felt thicker ones too, so. Um, I just realized I said a lot, a lot, two times in a row. So we're going to leave that in there, guys. Um, but yeah, I think that's all for material. So we're going to jump right into action. And again, you have a flipper tab with this ginormous hole here. Um, so the flipper tab, it, it works pretty well. The detent, you know, it's it's hard to fail this knife. Um, obviously, it's kind of like a, a pyramid shape here. You have some jimping on the front there. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, I can try to fail it, and you can, um, but it's really hard to. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna go on the flipper, and you're just gonna pull back, and it's gonna come right out. And it does a good job at that. Uh, it's not you know the best D10 in the world, um, but you know it's it's adequate, I would say. And then you have this hole, and the hole does its job. But I watched. Casey Knives Fast channel because he had these before me and I'm going to agree with him on here. I wish the hole was not as big because it's easy for my, like I can put my whole, my whole finger through there almost like that. And then like you get, I mean, I did it, but you get caught up in it and like, like it's not, it's not fun. Like they should make it smaller. So your, your finger doesn't, I mean, cause I can put my thumb, which is my thickest finger and I can put that almost the whole way through it. So, um, but for thumb flicking, you just kind of ride right up into this top part, and it comes right out. Middle finger flicking. Instead of putting your like whole pad of your finger in there, I found that you kind of just like jam like the top part, and then it comes right out. Try that again. Thumb flick, middle finger flick. Um, it, it, it's very satisfying. The blade is relatively big, and it's, you know, a lot of weight swinging out of there so i mean you're going to get a satisfying thwack here um closing action you have a lot of room here on the liner lock to disengage i didn't get a very good there we go so i mean it's it's very smooth on the close i believe this is on bearings um i forgot to mention that in the materials i always forget to mention like bearings or washers because most of my knives have bearings so it's just kind of it slips my mind but um I mean, it's it's very smooth on the close. You guys can see it falls, hits my nail, I move my thumb. And I, I mean, I basically, I mean, sh shake it a tiny, tiny bit. But most times you just use the momentum of here, kind of turn the knife and it, and it just falls close. Um, so it's very satisfying that way. So, I mean, overall the action's good. You can, you can slow roll it out. One thing that I kind of find interesting is the, the tang of the blade right here almost looks like it wants to act as a front flipper, but um, I mean, I tried. As you guys can see, I can. It's you can't really do it. I mean, if you had a little bit more like uh, leverage here, you might be able to pop it out. Uh, I just thought that was kind of a cool little quirk. I don't know if they designed it to look that way, if it just happened to look that way, but yeah, action on the middle finger flick, 
It's good. Thumb flick. It's pretty solid. Flipper, you know, not bad. And then the close is... The close is probably my favorite part of this knife just because it's so... I mean, it's just so smooth. I don't know who had all these before uh, Casey had them. So I could be, you know, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh person to have these. Um, I could be the second. So I'm not, I'm not totally sure. But yeah, action's pretty solid. Next up is Ergos. And Ergos are... They're okay. Um, this is obviously a, a pretty big knife, so I can easily get four fingers on there and still have plenty of room. Kind of have this a flipper tab here as a natural restriction point. There is kind of like a landing choil up here, but I, I mean, it's very, very small. The only time I would ever use it if I'm like doing something very, very precise, but your finger is basically right on the edge of that blade right there. So I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you have like tiny, tiny hands and really skinny fingers. But as you can see, you have this cut out here and it kind of like tapers a little bit and then up top is just flat until you get to the back here. Um, you have jimping up top and then again, jimping on the flipper tab. But it's, it's not like, I'm not gonna say that the ergos are bad. It's just something about it doesn't feel very good. Um, I don't know if it's just because it's kind of like blocky and like the scales aren't really contoured on like the edges where they like meet you know, the, uh, the liners. Um, again, I'm not going to say it's bad, but I can definitely feel the um, pocket clip kind of digging into my hand there. And that's not something I say too many times about knives. Uh, most of the time, I'm not very sensitive to a pocket clip, but this one kind of, I feel it a lot more for some reason. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, reverse draw cut, I think is what this is called. And I mean, that feels good. Um, hammer grip is i mean it's not bad but again if you're going to be really hard using this knife which is what i envision people would be doing with this because it's a big bulky you know decently thick kind of a bruiser knife um i would envision that they're going to do some hard use with it and i feel like if you're really like gripping down hard trying to get through like tough cuts the pot clip really might dig into your hand and, and bother it like it's doing to me um and again ergos are such a hard thing for people to compare um just based on how their hands are and you know the size of their hands size of the knife stuff like that but to me personally is it the worst knife i've held no not at all is it the best no not at all it's kind of right in that middle um maybe on the the lesser side of the middle just because that pot clip really is a hot spot and i'm not a huge you know fan of that um you do kind of have like this poon spoon little resting area up here so if you, you know, can grip it like this, if you have big enough hands like mine, um, your thumb kind of falls right in here and you can do some really precise cuts. This probably feels the best because when I do this, my hand slides up on the knife and I'm not gripping the um, pot clip as tight and as like far back. So I have less of my hand on the pot clip and I'm not like right on the edge of it. Um, so that, that's probably the most comfortable grip. But again, I can still feel it and it's, you know, it's, it's okay. So, I don't know. Just kind of a meh sort of Argos for me, so. And next we have Carry, or last we have Carry. Uh, and it carries relatively well. You know, for being, like I said, a chunky kind of thick knife, it doesn't have a bad weight to it. I think the, the milling on the uh, liners does uh, wonders for it. Um, you know, obviously you have a loop over style deep carry clip that is recessed, which is nice. Um, I've never really had too many issues with like mushroom top screws. Um, so it goes in and out of pocket very, you know, easily because the G10 is, you know, relatively smooth here. So you just kind of pop it. Has pretty good retention on the clip, but it's gone in and out of pants, you know, out of pocket relatively well. You do have a flipper tab. So again, I always talk about if you reach down in there to pick up change, something small, you might be bound to grab on the jimping, but it's not very aggressive to the point where you're going to hurt your hand on it. Uh, yeah, I mean... I would say carry, you know, it's not spectacular, but it's not worse, or it's not the worst. I would think that maybe when you see how kind of chunky this is and kind of how, you know, because to me this is kind of a bigger knife, um, you'd be surprised of how decent it carries. So, um, yeah, moving on to price point and what I recommend this knife. So on White Mountain Knives, I found it for $65. I do think that's a relatively good price because you're getting, I mean, that's kind of pushing it for D2, and I'm, I'm a D2 fan, uh, but I feel like at that price range, you can maybe get 14C, 
uh, maybe even Nitro V, uh, stuff like that. So that's maybe pushing it, but I, I still think it's worth it because it is a well-built knife. I think Best Tech really did a good job on the overall build. I mean, if you're looking for a hard use, sort of tactical looking knife, um, you know, I can't speak to the edge on it because again, I don't know where I'm at in the line of people that have reviewed it, but it's, you know, it's well built. The action is pretty good. Um, as long as you can get used to the, the bigger hole, which I don't, I didn't take much time to do that. Um, the flipper tab works pretty well. Thumb flick works pretty well. Again, middle finger flick works pretty well. Um, slow roll it, try the pointer finger. Flick. Yep. So, I mean, it's pretty fidgety, which is nice. Um, it's nice when you have that and kind of a bruiser knife. So I, I would recommend it to people that are looking for, again, a thicker, you know, well-built kind of, I mean, there's no, no blade play at all. This thing is a rock. So if you're looking for a budget knife, that's not going to break the bank that, and you like this design. I mean, I think the materials are fine. You're getting a really good action. And I, again, I think best tech did a good job with the build. So I would recommend this to certain people. Um, I don't, you know, now that I have this and stuff like that, I don't feel the need to go pick one up myself. Um, I'm glad I checked it out and got to experience it, but not one of those knives that I'm going to be rushing out to buy. So, um, yeah, I think $65. Plus, if you use um, Kevin or Casey or basically your favorite YouTubers, um, Wet Mountain Knives 10% off code, you can save a few bucks. So it'll probably take it down to $60 in free shipping. Um, so I do think that's a good price. So Again, I will leave it linked to Wet Mountain Knives down below. I know it's uh, sold out last time I looked, which was a couple days ago. Um, to me, the White Mountain Knives is just the easiest to um, link because it's what I shop on the most because I always try to look for knives on there because not other websites that sell knives have like discount codes. So I really like the White Mountain does that. Um, and like I said, you can check it out there. They have a nice specs list and you can go elsewhere if you want to buy it. So that was my full review of the Beztech Operator coming in from the Black Widow Prowser on group. Thank you, Justin, for being such a good organizer. Um, and always having good content and knives for us. So thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, if you have not yet considered clicking that subscribe button, please consider doing so. Um, it would mean a lot to me if you would like to join the family. And um, yeah, just you guys are what makes me really, you know, want to do this. And um, I just want to see the channel grow. So please consider doing that if you like the content. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your night. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.